Hello friends, Doug Fink, 16-time Microsoft MVP, back again with uh, another video. This time we're going to talk about creating autonomous AI agents using PowerShell. Super cool topic on multiple levels. So if you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and you'll get notified when I do more videos like this. So let's take a look at how to do creating autonomous AI agents using PowerShell. Let's go. Okay, so you can do an install. Let's type it here. Install module down the bottom. You can do an install module PSAI. Once you do that, you can head off and get a key from OpenAI, put $2 on a credit card, and you're off and running. Don't worry about it running away with cost because if you hit the $2 limit, it doesn't charge you until you take the overt action of adding more. Um, once you do that, you get a key, you set the key, you're good to go. Um, when you run the install module and you try out some of these features, you'll know right away I'll pop up a message saying, hey, your key's not set or something went wrong and it'll step you through how to fix it if you need that. So what I'm, <coughs> so I'm going to look at today is taking standard PowerShell functions and then turning them into agents. Uh, these are ones that you've built, or you can have the ones that are come along with Microsoft uh, PowerShell, all the built-in ones, uh, like get win event, get process, get servers, get services, and so on. So here, what I'm going to show you is I have a simple function called get current weather, and it has uh, two parameters, a location and a unit, so you can pass in like get current weather that we'll see, and you can say New York City or wherever you are, and you can default it. it it grabs the weather in fahrenheit uh, you can pass in celsius and it'll return that um, lines 10 through 13 set that up and then line 15 is a standard invoke rest method which goes out to this website or this rest api passes the location passes in the unit and it returns the value so let's take a look at what that looks like We'll just run this up and it's that quick and easy so you can use this if you want right in your own anytime you'd like if you want to do you know put it in your profile that's where i put it let it pop up you can see what happens about the weather is wherever you'd like it to be so on line 18 we're just calling the get current weather function and we're passing in new york city and that's we see in the terminal that's what it comes back with new york it's a cloudy day, a little sunshine, sunshine. It returned 53 degrees Fahrenheit, and the winds are um, coming out of a certain direction at 15 miles per hour. We can also easily change that up. So standard stuff with working with uh, something like PowerShell. Okay, you can you're just passing in parameters into a function, and we see we get Seattle, and we'll go one more. We'll take a look at London, and. If we didn't pass in Celsius, it would come back with Fahrenheit. But London, they over, they like to use Celsius, so we run that up, and we can see we get London, we get the 10 degrees Celsius and seven kilometers, um, right? And if I go back to New York, it uses miles per hour in Fahrenheit as compared to Celsius and kilometers. Cool. So that's shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, what I want to do is I want to use the same function, but now I want to create an autonomous agent. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. First, we keep the same function. That's what we saw before. And down here, we'll take a look at uh, what's up above uh, line 25 in a second. I'm going to use new agent. And you there's a tools parameter. And I'm just going to pass in the name of the function get current weather right and I'm going to take so basically I'm creating a configuration for an agent here's the tools I'm going to pass in some instructions and I'm going to enable use this switch to enable show tool call so I can see what actually the agent is uh, instructing PSAI to do um, then line 27 I'm going to take that construction that configuration I'm going to pipe it into get agent response and I'm going to pass this is my prompt New York City, it's that simple. So 
the key is is what happens in new agent we'll see that in a second. i'll talk about that in a second and tool the instructions are the next key piece this is what we call a steering prompt it's a prompt it's part of prompt engineering thinking uh it's, and this sets up your model so it understands uh, what it needs to do right um it's a little different than a user prompt but it's the it's sim it just helps the model pay attention better and all i'm going to do is say okay you're an expert weather assistant um give us some more details you will respond with the current weather in that location if units aren't specified figure out the unit based on the location right so if i pass in london i want the model the ai model to figure out well what, what does london want to have it reported in and your your input can also include directions like uh, state west of new york we'll see how that works so again we have our tools we're going to say give ai the tool it knows about um get current weather I'm going to pass in those instructions and we're going to enable show tool calls uh, pretty simple so i'm just going to run i'm going to comment out 27 i'm just going to run this up and we're going to take a look at really quick at uh, dollar agent weather and that's the configuration here's the tools show tool calls is enabled uh, the llm the large language model is configured and we'll run it one more time and I'll do a dump JSON on it. And you can see tools now gets has all this fancy JSON. Basically, this is how OpenAI likes to have, or it's tuned its models to take this kind of a structure and it understands the name of the model. It understands the properties like location and it understands the property um, unit. And that it's an uh, and it has it has enum capability. So basically, what I do for you is in tools when you pass in one or more um, functions, I take the signature, meaning the function name, the parameters, the data types, if there's a validate set, and I translate that into a JSON structure that AI wants to use for function calling, and that works with any. Um, function in in PowerShell whether it's built in or whether it's the ones that you create again we can see that show uh, tool calls is present it's enabled uh, out of the box the agents are configured with OpenAI GPT 4.0 mini that can be changed and then here's the instructions that we set up so let's see this in action so now we're gonna go back and rerun this again but now we're gonna say okay let uh, get agent response New York City and what we see because show tool calls is enabled we see get current weather and the AI model took the prompt took the so the prompt the instructions and the and the tool structure that JSON string all that got wrapped up into a single prompt to AI models the AI model GPT 4.0 mini okay and we when it got the prompt New York City it figured out from the instructions and from the tools that it suggested to PSAI, the PowerShell AI module, you should call this thing called GetWeather and set the location for New York City and set the units to Fahrenheit. When that came back to PSAI, I called that and is off to the races. That will work with anything you do. If you're not comfortable with that, you can tweak it, but that's another video. So all that gets wrapped, gets passed up with the, with the prompt New York City, and it comes back and says, the current weather in New York City is 53 degrees, with a light cloud cover, winds coming from the northeast at 15 miles per hour. So if we remember before, um, let's see if we can get back to it. Let's do a get current weather, and we'll pass in New York City. This is what comes back from the call to that rest endpoint, and it has emojis and all that kind of stuff. This entire thing was passed back into AI, and AI then digested it, figured out the emojis, and then gave us an, a summary in English. Pretty cool. Let's see some more stuff. So now I can take, I don't know, I'll comment that out, and we'll say, well, what's the weather in London? Let's run that up. And notice now the unit has been changed to Celsius. So AI figured out, again, it, it was start from scratch, took the instructions, took the uh, tools um, that were created, that JSON structure, and I uh, took the prompt London and I figured out the location from that and I figured out, oh, they want to use do it in Celsius. Now imagine if you had a program that by hand, right? 
you'd have to be able to say, oh, they have to specify Celsius, or maybe I'll look up on a map and I'll do some translation um, and figure out what they, what region of the world that it's in, and then figure out whether it's Fahrenheit or not. Let's go to line 31, and here I'm going to say, um, get an agent response, and I'm just going to put Florida, Munich, Seattle, and Belgium. Let's run this, and now we should see four calls, right? So the model figured out, oh, you have four distinct things, distinct areas, locations. It came back with Florida, that's Fahrenheit, Munich is Celsius, Seattle is Fahrenheit, and Belgium is Celsius. And this time, it gives us a markdown format with those emojis still in place um, instead of giving us an English summary uh, in language. So we could change that through our instruction prompt. Again, the subject of another video. Now even, imagine trying to write that by hand. You'd have to figure out, okay, did, uh, did they actually, you know, how do I parse this? Um, figuring out which pieces are parsable. Are they just parsed by, you know, one uh, uh, word? Or is it, are they gonna give like New York City in there? And if I threw New York City in there, let's do that. So, right, that's a little bit harder to parse. And I'm gonna throw it a couple of curveballs, sometimes a semicolon. And then here we're gonna say a comma. Let's see if this works, it may not. See if we get uh, five calls, and there we go. So AI took that prompt, figured out what it was talking about, that it was talking about different locations, and correctly told the PowerShell AI module to that the, the different locations and figured out which what units to use. All right, last demo, very cool stuff so far. Um, what if I wanted to do something like, well, I don't know, I think I wanted to go west of New York City. So I'm going to put here in my prompt, state west of New York City, right? So now the model has to figure out what's New York City, what's west, and it correctly figures out that the state that I want is New Jersey, and it finds out the weather. What if I wanted to find out the, the state east of New York City? No problem. Connecticut defaults to Fahrenheit, and we're good to go. You can take this next steps and test out what you'd like and you could say I want 50 degrees latitude 23 degrees uh, uh, longitude and uh, see if the model wants to figure that out now imagine if you were writing this all by hand um, that'd be pretty challenging to do so what I've done here is we've created an autonomous agent the autonomous part can be seen when you do this the model knows how to make multiple tell you to make multiple calls to functions you provide, just the functions you provided, uh, it's not calling the functions, you're calling the functions. So it autonomously figured out, oh, I need to ha have you call A, B, C, and D, and take those results and then formulate a response and say, okay, I'm done. I got gathered all the information I wanted. So that's the autonomous agent part. And I did it with a typical PowerShell function that's wrapping a call to a REST endpoint. And this is to plant seeds, like what functions do you have that you can actually start to enable this way uh, by just dropping it into new agent tools. Uh, and then you could even use built-in ones. You can use other modules that are from PowerShell and you can drop those function calls and those function names and definitions into tools and begin to wrap it in agents and see the kind of results you want. Um, so, hope you enjoyed. I think this is fascinating. I think it's uh, great. Uh, follow me on YouTube, and I do live streams of this on Deeper Dive, so check out where I do that, and stay curious.